My name is Just Eric. Welcome to Talking with Fans People. And we're going to attempt again this exciting topic of the DCHN subtypes. Now, those subtypes are the dominant, creative, harmonizing, and normalizing subtypes. We're going to read this little thing now on the internet that will help us to understand it. First dichotomy, contact distance. The first poll indicates the predominance of the need for contact and the second the need to maintain distance. Into the contact category will fall expressed extroverts as well as extroverted introverts. Distant will be clearly expressed introverts will, but also introverted extroverts. Uh... Uh, those experts who avoid intensive contact. The scale of Burtness is thus split in four gradations. Second dichotomy, terminating, initiating. I understand terminating is the ability to finish what was started and a tendency towards regulation. Initiating is the opposite tendency to initiate and to easily move on to something else with corresponding disorder in matters and affairs. As you see, these are concrete definitions of the usual dichotomy. Rationality, ir irrationality. It would be incorrect to think that in the house of any rational range preceding order, that it clearly plans all and that all irrational throw everything to the side and are burdened by planning. In reality, two intervening gradations are frequently encountered between these two extreme poles. In the terminating pole belong clearly expressed rationals and orderly irrationals. Initiating behavior is possessed by clearly expressed irrationals and disorderly rationals. And the third additional dichotomy is connecting and ignoring. The level of sensitivity to changes in the environment is seemed to be the basis of the scale. Connectors are very sensitive to such changes, whereas ignorers, as the name suggests, are capable of turning no attention towards this. This polarity is the subtype refinement of the classic dichotomy dynamic static. Consider these three scales. We obtain the following four subtypes. If you are into contact, you got terminal, you like to finish things, and you're into connecting, you connect to the environment, and you're the dominant subtype. If you're contact, initiating, and ignoring, like me, on those three, then I'm, you're the creative subtype. If you're distant, terminal, ignoring, you're normalizing. And if you're distant, initiating, and connecting, then you are harmonizing. So I think this is interesting because I determined which I was on each of those dichotomies. And... Then when I look down there, sure enough, that's what I was in terms of the subtype it said. I was the creative subtype. I would think that most people would deem me the creative subtype uh, based on the evidence that's at, at hand. I seem to like to make stuff. So that would seem to support the model, at least provide um, consist data consistent with rather than contradictory to the model. And that's a good starting point, I suppose. The reason I like this thing a lot is the, the idea of contact distance, th those three dichotomies seem to sum up a lot of, of basic human needs and basic human motivations and stuff like that. If, if you think about contact distance as how much involvement with others does one need to have, I know that I land somewhere in the medium-high range of that probably. I know other people who need more, ENFJ, Abraham needs more than I do. I can think of a couple other uh, EFs that need more than I do probably as well. But uh, I'm still probably higher than the, on that scale than a lot of ENTPs. And then on the second one regarding the um, finalization or initiating, well, I'm obviously initiating 100% on that scale. I, it's much, much easier for me to initiate new ideas and get things rolling than it is for me to follow through on things that require... Uh, regular regularity especially I can persist at things for a long time provided the thing implicitly contains enough flexibility that it requires me not to adhere to any sort of regular planning or schedule but regardless um, yeah I'm on that end of that scale the initiating end and then the third one I'm pretty clearly in the ignoring end I can be totally uncomfortable for long periods of time before I realize you should stop sitting like like that Eric you're you're in pain yeah. So my back's fucking killing me from that. <laughs> Where you sit one in a bad I, position for hours. Like I got two into an email today. Mm hmm. It mm -hmm. was kind of a confrontational email. That'll do it to you for sure. That'll that'll occupy your full attention for hours. It was a, it was a solid half hour long, uh, politely aggressive email. <laughs> was every word perfect? 
Yeah. Um, it probably could have been more perfect. I'm sorry. It could have been more expanded on, but I thought that it would have been lost effort. Right. Interesting. Okay, so Taylor, would you deem yourself the you you would you you deem yourself ignoring as well, right? Yeah. And would you deem yourself contact or distant? I define define it more. I mean, I'm sure you defined it some, but it's it, it's it's basically how many how much do you want to involve other people in your stuff? Like how much of the time of your day? It says people who fall into the category of uh, contact, more in the category of contact, are clearly expressed extroverts as well as extroverted introverts. But the distant types would be introverted extroverts, which I suspect you might be one of those. And but I'm not sure. Um, and those extroverts who avoid intensive contact. So. I like I like a lot of contact, but I don't like it to be democratic. Explain. So if I have to be, I have to be democratic in something, then it kind of kills the whole thing for me. What does that mean? Uh, take their opinion into account for my actions. I see. Interesting. I would agree that I am more introverted than you, probably. Okay. Okay. Um, but okay, let's put you in the context. What are you in. doing there? Huh? What What are you What are you thinking there? Well, you got you, your democratic thing got my mind rolling there. I started that it went off onto his onto various thoughts there. That's interesting. I not I haven't really thought about things in those terms exactly. Well, there's I'm times. I mean, here. at face value, I mean, I was tempted to say I like lots of people around. I like lots of contact. Then I realized, really, really, I mean, that will that will kill that in a hurry if if I have to start, you know. If there's getting, corresponding getting, obligations. Right. Okay. What about the second one? Initiating. You're initiating, right? So you. Uh, give me the. The uh, bullet points on that one again. Um, terminating is the ability to finish what was started and a tendency towards regulation. Initiating is the opposite tendency to initiate and to easily move on to something else with corresponding yeah. disorder in matters and affairs. Totally initiating. Okay. And then on the third one is the ignoring connecting. So you're a creative subtype as well, according to this. Do you feel like a creative subtype or do you feel more like a dominant subtype? Based on, just on those two words. Um, well, they they seem like they're not apples to apples to me, kind of. Dominant, I mean, is dominant how you interact with others? And creative is what you're I mean, into? I, I, think, I think creative, from my perspective, is how I interact with others as well, right? Um, I'd say it really depends on the on the situation and the person, but I've I'm learning that I'm probably more dominant than I've realized. Or I don't know if you ever hear this. You don't know. Have, have you made this with dominant. have you made one of these with your Dremel tool yet? This is in progress, no. this guy. That is progress. That's in progress, yeah. He's not done yet, but <laughs> Hey, hey, no, I've just fucked up a gun. That's all. Oh, you just fucked up a gun. Okay, well. Um, I I think in general ENTPs probably are creative subtypes, but I suspect that a lot of us don't necessarily create a lot, and I'm I'm curious about that in general. Do you feel like do you have any urge to create more? Probably not in a not in an art not in a stereotypical art sense. I don't want to paint uh, or do any of that stuff, but I do like systems, solutions, um, the, the puzzles, the problems, problem solving process, mm -hmm. and uh, especially if it's tactical. 
So maybe if you were in like a group with some people who were utilizing high order uh, extroverted thinking or like extroverted sensing, do you think you'd get more done? Just because you had people that sort of um, like if you're doing more of the brainstorming type stuff. Uh, I I like working with INTPs, provided that there is a J somewhere around. <laughs> that we don't just get lost in bullshit. <laughs> right. Um, okay, well, it's very interesting. Host Ken, I'm curious about you now. Of the first of those dichotomies, what do you think? Where, where you are? This is the first time I've heard about this stuff, and I'm not sure time? I understand it completely right now. Me are too, you more but somebody? I it's pretty straightforward. Are you more somebody who wants to have a lot of people around, a lot of contact with people, a lot of interaction, or are you are you an extroverted introvert or an express intro, extrovert, or are you um, an introverted introvert or a introverted extrovert? <laughs> That's basically what it says. I I describe it as an extroverted introvert. I'm an okay, so you're I'm an introvert that yeah. That's contact. Okay. And what about the second one? Second one, can you run me through them again? Alright, the second one is... I'll remember in a second, hold on. <laughs> uh... Dominant creative. Oh, initiate, finalize. Initiate or finalize? Do you like to begin, is it easier for you to begin a lot of shit? Or are you more finish it and get, get it put away and let's get the job done right? Yeah. See, I'm trying to... The problem is I'm bad with providing specific examples, so I can say that I'd prefer one or the other, but I don't know if my actions have actually reflected that. Um, starting stuff, I've started quite a bit of stuff. Uh, I've probably started a lot more than I've finished. Um, but if I had a preference, I'd prefer to have finished products. In fact, I get kind of disgruntled when I just sort of start stuff and then don't finish it, even though that's pretty much how things have happened so it's like I want to be a finisher <laughs> I really like being a finisher it you just do. doesn't always happen that way things that are not finished okay what about the third one the third one is um, would you uh, what is the dominating or creative no, no, no the third one is oh. If I can, um, let me see. it's uh, connecting or ignoring. Oh yeah, with your I immediate environment. Like, are you somebody who's likely to notice? Oh my gosh, it's too cold in here, and turn the heater on. Or are you likely to be shivering before you notice that? It varies. Um, sometimes I'll feel sort of hyper aware in a way that I'm uncomfortable in a situation, and then other times, especially if I'm sort of getting tied up in a thought um, like I'll sort of have a moment of self-awareness and realize that I've been staring at the same spot on the wall for like the past 10 minutes and I haven't moved and it could be you know like cold or something or hot some of the complaints I get from people around the house is that my room's always too hot but I don't seem to notice it I call you ignoring then I think you're a creative subtype as well I think it makes sense that the three people on camera would be creative subtypes because I think that's how that would express you know I can't really ignore being too hot, though. That's one thing that I'll instantly act on. Instantly complain it's about. <laughs> it's, it's one of those weird things that, like, I like colder climates. I like winter way better than summer. But at the same time, I can handle way hotter temperatures than I can handle cold temperatures. So I'll be outside, like, shivering. People are like, are you cold? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, so get a jacket. I'm like, I don't want to. Well... A jacket is a responsibility because then you go inside and you got to take it off and then and then keep track of it. I'd rather just freeze, you know, less to worry about. Anybody else in the room want to go and talk to us about their subtype when we go through those dichotomies? How about my singer friend, JC? Does she, she want to talk to me? No. Okay, well, let's then draw this uh, this subtype in extravaganza hoot nanny party that we just had to a close, and move on to another topic. Fifteen minutes—it's a good length. Thanks for watching.